Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the show. This is Andy Webb with Lifestyles Unlimited. And as always, we're working on your financial freedom. And the topic of today's show, I want to talk about attaining success in real estate investing. This is for you if you are just now thinking, hey, dipping my toes in, maybe getting started, something like that. You can attain success. We're going to hear from somebody that has done that very thing. And I'm going to add to that, even if you are already an investor, there are great ways to attain even better, even greater success. And, and really, there are two key pieces here. There's education. There's knowing what you're doing. And there is mentoring, which is somebody kind of showing you the way. And Lifestyles Unlimited is both an education and mentoring group. You can get both pieces the, right here at, at Lifestyles Unlimited. But we're going to focus on the mentoring piece today. And I personally, I'm very focused on that. I mentioned some of my goals in an earlier show at the start of the year. And among other things, we're looking to uh, buy our very own small apartment community. So I'm very closely working with the multifamily mentors here in Dallas-Fort Worth, where I am. Parallel, we're buying some houses out of town. So I'm working very closely with the single family mentors in these other parts of Texas that I'm not quite as familiar with. So we're going to focus on mentors because they can vastly improve your success rate when you've got them helping you, you know, helping you along that chosen path, single family, multifamily, whichever that is. And on today's show, what I want to do is introduce you to one of the single family mentors that we have here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Let you get to know her, hear some of her successes, because that's how she's going to guide you. She's been there. She has the map in her hand. We'll hear about that, maybe some of her goals. So you can see how she has gotten to where she is with Lifestyles Unlimited and how she can help add value to your journey as a real estate investor. So without further ado, I want to welcome Nicole Liljestrand to the program. How are you, Nicole? I'm doing great, Andy. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. First question. I have trouble with your last name. Did I get it right? You did. I was impressed. That was great. (laughs) All right. (laughs) I'm not used to somebody getting it on the first try. (laughs) No, no, no. I've I've been standing in front of the mirror drinking my coffee this morning practicing. I said, okay, I got to get it right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so, uh, j- jokes aside, I do I do appreciate you uh, coming on. I've gotten to know you over the past few years um, at Lifestyles Unlimited, and I guess for the listener, let, let's maybe set the stage for them. If if you if you don't mind, give us just a little bit of background. What were you doing before you became a real estate investor? Before you joined Lifestyles Unlimited, what what was life like? What were you up to? Sure. Well, um, I had worked my way up in the world of retail management, and I was a general manager for a Fortune 500 retailer. Um, so, uh, a lot of long hours, a lot of uh, you know, long days on my feet, and uh, you know, no, no sacred time. It seemed like uh, you know, didn't get holidays off and that sort of thing. Um, you know, so kind of that whole soul sucking corporate environment that I'm sure a lot of people out there can relate to. Uh, but I spent about 15 years uh, in that uh, in that career. So. Okay, and retail management, long hours on your feet. You know, I didn't do retail. I was a I was a pizza chain general manager for a period of time, uh, delivery that sort of thing. So I'm, I fully identify with Richard. You, you, when everybody else is taking a break, we gotta be we gotta be in the trenches doing our thing because that's their yep. day off and they're having their fun while we're while we're out there. So I fully identify with that. But you you had an interesting angle with your retail career. You weren't just doing or at least for part of it, uh, not just regular old retail, right? What were you up to? Um, well, I I moved around a bit. Uh, you know, they, they sort of, you know, assigned me to those struggling stores that needed to be turned around, you know, distressed stores, if you will, and, uh, you know, to make them profitable again. So, uh, so I did get to move around a little bit, and, and uh, that actually did set the stage for me to get started with some, uh, you know, maybe somewhat accidental real estate investments early on, um, but those definitely 
you know, paid off and showed me that, you know, real estate was a great vehicle to build some passive income and grow well. So yeah, I was reading, I was reading your bio and, it, and it, if I'm reading right here, you, you were the classic accidental landlord by way of, of moving as part of your career, right? Had a house, bought a house, had to move, didn't want to sell it, couldn't sell it, don't know, but wound up renting it out. That's essentially what happened, right? Uh, essentially, and, and I actually, you know, got started a little bit bef- even earlier than that when I first bought the house. You know, it was just me, you know, living in this house alone with my little dog. We didn't take up much space, so I had a room available, and I was right next to a nice, you know, university. So I actually started out a little bit non traditionally, but I rented a room out to a double science major college student there uh, at the university, and. Uh, so started to kind of see, okay, I can I can make a little bit of money by renting out some property. And so uh, when I did move, I actually rented it initially to the person that moved to come and take over that store uh, once it was ready to uh, to just uh, continue operating. And uh, you know, even with property management, I was making a little bit of money. But that's when I really started to see some of the tax benefits of real estate investing, and that was really exciting to me. So. <laughs> yeah, tax benefits for sure. We just we just crossed the um, year-end threshold, tax filing deadline, et cetera. We've all seen our property taxes as well, of course, on the note of taxes. we In fact, I did a show uh, about a week ago or so on the on the very tax benefits of real estate. There, there's a lot to it. We don't need to get into those today. We might get in one angle, I think. We might talk a little bit about the 1031 exchange later because I know you've had some experience there. But if the listener mm-hmm. wants to catch that show on the, the tax angles or the tax advantages, go to lifestylesunlimited.com, uh, click on the radio button, and you can find the show's uh, archive there. Again, my name is Andy Webb. You can just search by uh, by name there. So you've had some experience in real estate prior to joining Lifestyles Unlimited. Was that the extent of it, just that, that accidental landlord situation, or did you go on to do more before finding us? Uh, I did get a couple more properties um, before joining, and then I was under contract on a fourth property when I was sitting in my first two-day seminar at Lifestyles Unlimited. Uh, so that that second property is a great story too. But uh, the first property was my 1031 exchange property. My second property was my 401k property. So <laughs> Four, 1031 401k. Okay, a little bit of got some numbers going on there. Let's take a quick break, Nicole. When we come back, let's unpack and let's hear about the 1031 and the 401k property. Stick around. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Now, let's get back to your map to financial freedom. Welcome back to the show. You're listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. I'm your host, Andy Webb, and I have a great guest with me today. I've got Nicole Liljestrand uh, joining me. Uh, She, like I, she's in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, We both go into the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth offices for events. We do stuff virtually, all kinds of stuff now. And we're hearing a little bit about her story so that you can uh, become familiar with one of our single family mentors, as it were. And I, you know, even though I've been a member at Lifestyles Unlimited for 10 years, Nicole, I leverage, I still to this day, I leverage both the single family and the multifamily mentors as much as I can, as much as I need to, because you guys have a broad, broad swath of experience across our, our mentoring base. So if I got a question, you guys are my, my first stop to see if I can, uh, if I can get some help, quite frankly. We're going to talk about a couple of the houses you bought, some some unique strategies you use. Before we get to that, I am curious. I know a lot of listeners have been listening to the program for a long time, maybe not quite taking action. Um, how did you find Lifestyles Unlimited? Well, uh, you know, I had I had heard about some other real estate groups, um, you know, on the radio and that sort of thing. And, you know, it just so happened. Uh, I had actually been recently married and my husband uh, had a friend who was a Lifestyles Unlimited member who had retired himself exclusively through passive investing into multifamily, which was something I always wanted to learn more about. I had always, you know, driven past apartment communities and wondered, how could I 
take on, you know, purchasing something like that because I'd done the single family thing. So, uh, so, and then he'd been hearing on the radio for years. And so he told me about it. He's like, we've they've got an event coming up, uh, you know, on a, on a Tuesday evening, I think it was. And, you know, do you want to go with me and check it out? I'm like, absolutely. This is definitely right up my alley. So. Uh, yeah, we get a lot of that. folks that um, are introduced by way of referrals, like you're speaking of friends, family, acquaintances, co-workers. I'm always impressed by the co-worker cohort that comes to Lifestyles. It seems that somebody <laughs> from any given large corporation finds out about this real estate thing, starts doing it, and starts, I don't know, proselytize within, within the corporation. And before you know it, everybody's jumping ship and getting into the the real estate boat. So good stuff. Now, Let's talk about those couple of houses that you mentioned uh, going into the break. We, we, we mentioned a 1031 exchange house, and we mentioned a 401k house. Which one do you want to tell us about first? Um, well, um, let's do the, the 401k house first, if you don't mind. Uh, okay. I, you know, that that well, uh, whole thing happened several years back. But well, what makes it a 401k house? Why, why do you call it that? <laughs> So in order to purchase my second house, I took a loan out from my 401k, um, paid myself back over a three-year period, but uh, but my employer let me borrow up to 50% of my 401k uh, in order to buy a house. A lot of employers have a, a program like that. You just, you pay yourself back, you pay yourself back with interest, uh, but that enabled me to actually acquire that second house when I was 30 years old. That's a great strategy. You know, people may not have the liquid funds sitting in the bank account, especially right now with, with high inflation and everything else. But if you've got that 401k that you really otherwise maybe can't quite tap into, you can do the loan. And I think, what is it, fifty typically 50% or up to $50,000 that you can borrow. You're the lender. You pay yourself back. You earn the interest and, and so on. So what happened with that house? Did Do you still have it? How long did you hold it? What would what, you do with the thing? So I am actually listing that house for sale in the next couple of weeks. I just gave my tenant, my, my resident notice that, uh, that I will not be renewing her lease and I do intend to sell that property. Um, but you know, I, I paid myself back over a three year period on that house. And, you know, in that, at that point in time, you know, I was, I was still, you know, sort of in a hybrid, like kind of a Dave Ramsey mindset. And I had to pay myself back into my 401k. That was my safety net, right? That was my retirement account, you know, had to have that, uh, you know, so I did. And, and what I didn't realize was that by the time I had paid myself back that three-year period, the equity in that house that I had borrowed 50% of my 401k to purchase was worth more than 100% of my 401k at that point in time. So the growth, the, the equity, the appreciation uh, outpaced that that 401k by far. So. That's a, that's very fascinating. That's a great side by side case study. So it's all, it's fortunate that you still had the 401k in order to see how those two horses paced against each other. And we, you, you, to the listener, you heard it right there. The house far, far outperformed the 401k. And of course, I don't know if you're still sitting on that 401k. If you're watching it right now, it's, it's walking backwards right now. It's not, it's not headed towards any finish lines, is it? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have le less than a thousand dollars still sitting in that account because the rest is now in real estate. Once I realized, because <laughs> that's just one factor. That's just one way that we make money. And you know, in the meantime, I cash flowed on that property for three years. You know, in addition to that market appreciation, I cash flowed for three years. I've cash flowed for a lot longer than that now. But you know, during that time, you know, when I'm comparing that those two accounts or those two, uh, you know, assets. You know, I'm still making money, you know, four other ways with that, uh, with that property. So absolutely. Uh, and, and, and I love that about real estate. You, you, you mentioned in your bio somewhere, I noticed you use the, the, the phrase that it's real estate is very forgiving. I don't remember the exact context, but part of the reason that it is as forgiving as it is, is because we make money five different ways. And if, and David Fisher, I hear him say this all the time. He's one of our two day presenters. You mentioned the two day, uh, uh workshop a, a little bit earlier, maybe in the prior segment, and we can talk about that later, but, um, he'll, he'll tell you up front, you know, maybe Maybe one of those five doesn't perform for some reason. You got four others that can that can come in right behind it and and more than make up for for that if if that's even the case. Um, so that's the four hundred one k house. 
What's the 1031 Exchange House? So the 1031 Exchange House was my very first house. And, you know, in my mindset at that time, prior to lifestyles, I was going to hold each property until they were paid off at least, you know, the 27 and a half years that I could depreciate them. Uh, You know, that was sort of my Dave Ramsey hybrid approach to real estate investing was, you know, just continue to to like sort of snowball down that debt, right? Um, So, you know, I had a lot of equity that had accumulated there. Not a ton of cash flow on that property. At the time that I sold that property, I was cash flowing about $220 a month. Not super exciting. Still better than, you know, a poke in the eye with a sharp stick or something. But, you know, not 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 terribly exciting. That's the least ca- amount of cash flow that I had on any single family investment property that I've ever owned, actually, is Uh, is on that particular property. So when I sold it, uh, I did a 1031 exchange. I took that equity and I reinvested it into three more houses. I think I I had close to a quarter of a million dollars in equity capture from that transaction. And not only that, I I took $220 a month and turned it into over $1,500 a month in monthly cash flow. So reinvested that debt equity and, you know, that, was that's a huge piece of my my retirement story from corporate america actually so not just wow but double wow triple wow that th- those are those are amazing numbers we're going to come into or we're going to head into a quick break when we come on the back side i just want to kind of summarize a little bit about what you what you just told us on that house because those are amazing numbers quarter million in equity gained from that one transaction stick around Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Andy Webb. If you have any questions for me, you can send me an email to askandy at L-U-I-N-C dot com. And I'm joined today by a great guest. I'm joined by Nicole. She's one of our single family mentors here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And Nicole, you and I are both uh, uh, members here in Dallas Fort Worth. I personally, I've been buying wherever the wherever the opportunity is. So anywhere around Dallas Fort Worth um, doesn't matter. And in fact, we're about to close on a property down closer to Houston with another one coming up right behind it. So we're going even farther afield. I'm curious, what kind of what kind of ground do you cover with your with your investing? So the last ten or so houses that we bought were in North Texas, and you know we have a few in DFW, and the last several, uh, including my favorite one, is are in Sherman Denison area. But I always like to say that you know be open to opportunity where opportunity presents itself, and so sometimes that means going a little bit outside of the the major metro area. So that's certainly been a strategy that I've used and that I've seen a lot of other people use and be very successful with. Well, you know, I, I my kudos, I've not invested in Sherman Denison myself just yet. I know we have a lot of uh, apartment investors that are Lifestyles Unlimited lead syndicator investors uh, that have bu- been buying up that way. And, and I'm sure you heard the great news that uh, Texas Instruments is really planning to blow out that area uh, with, uh, I guess, a new campus, massive, massive uh, development. So you guys that are holding assets up there, boy, you are very well positioned for <laughs> for the future. So uh, definitely a good move. Like you said, take advantage of those opportunities wherever they are. That's why I'm going south to Houston right now. I had a couple hit my, my radar from the, the Lifestyles Realty team down that way. It's like, hey, why not uh, make, make, make for a fun road trip from time to time, I suppose. Um, going back to what we were talking about in the prior segment, which was the 1031 exchange. So you held a property for quite some time and you sold it and you could have just sold it and, and taken the tax burden. You would have owed capital gains tax at that point. As long as you hold one of these assets for a year and a day, you're going to be taxed at capital gains rates rather than earned income. But on top of that, there's some other uh, uh, taxes that would go, go into that. Um, but rather than eat that, you said, I'm going to do a 1031 exchange. And what that allowed you to do is take those gains and roll those into another property. 
But you went one step further, and you went one step further past that, and you bought not one, not two, but three properties with those gains, with that equity. And tell me, remind me one more, I got to hear that number one more time. You took $200 in monthly cash flow and converted it into how much? It's, it's over 1500 and you know likely going to, to be closer to about 17 to 1800 uh, you know with with, new, with lease renewals coming up so super exciting <laughs> yeah that, I mean that that is a that is great news it's a great number and I've done a lot of shows lately because of just around the topic of inflation and I'm, I'm sure you see it I see it everybody sees it we go to the gas pump and you know, I'm driving a truck. I had a hundred dollar gas bill the other day. It just just eats me alive to see that. Um, you know, go to the food. You know, go to the grocery store. Cut, get out with your food bill. Everything's so much more expensive now. Instead of having that two hundred dollar income, you've got fifteen hundred on top of it now. Um, my message to the listener simply is this: You're hearing it right now from Nicole. This is a way to create more income. So that this this whole inflation thing is less of a burden to to you. Uh, to you and your family. So you you, you, you mentioned, I, I believe, maybe we were talking over the break, you, you use the word favorite investment. What is your favorite investment? Do you have a favorite house? Is there is there a story you can tell us? Well, my favorite single family investment is a little house that we bought up in Denison, Texas. And we bought it at the beginning of last year. Uh, the house was built in 1903. It was a pretty heavy lift on the on the wow. uh, rehab. I got to say, wow, uh, ni- 1903. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a, an interesting project. You know, I wouldn't recommend that as a first investment, you know, but, uh, you know, if you've got a, a good team in place and you can uh, take down a heavier lift on the rehab, then, you know, sometimes going for those older homes or those more distressed homes can be very, very rewarding. Uh, but that, that little house just has a ton of character. Um, you know, it's that, that historic... Uh, those historic uh, features, and, and we did try to preserve as many of those as we could. Um, we rented it out, you know, in the blink of an eye, of course, and we've seen, you know, a tremendous amount of appreciation on that house. I think at this point, uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you this. We we took about $1,100 to the closing table to acquire that house. Wow. <laughs> we are... Currently, cash flowing about seven hundred dollars a month on that property. So those deals don't happen every day. I will I will qualify that. But when you're prepared for the opportunities and you know what you're doing and you know what to look for, then then uh, you know being open to those opportunities and, and ready to take those on can can be an, an excellent uh, excellent rewarding experience. And so having that that uh, education and having that knowledge to be able to do those. Uh, you know, is is definitely key in that. So yeah, I was going to ask you, how do we get that? How do we get that experience? And if you if you don't naturally have it, don't have a family member that's done it, you got to go to someone like Nicole, find somebody that can show you the path. And Nicole, you mentioned in the first segment the the two day. Uh, we didn't get into that, but I do want to touch on that. Uh, the two day financial freedom seminar is, uh, it, as the name suggests, a two-day event whereby in day one, all we're talking about is investing, as Nicole and as I do, in single-family houses. And then day two in multifamily, in apartments, it's it's just a ton of education. It's drinking from a water hose. I've gone back many times now, and I always learn something new. And if you're interested in that seminar, I want to give you a website. You can go check out GiveMeTotalFreedom.com. Again, just written together, GiveMeTotalFreedom.com. There's a promo code if you decide to sign up. It's Save Big, all caps, S-A-V-E-B-I-G, Save Big. And that'll give you a two-year membership, uh, ma- massively discounted. I think it's $297. Great deal. And you can go back to that two-day or even the four-day in the evenings. We offer that virtually online as well, as many times as you need to. So, Nicole, I, I don't know. You, you, when, when did you do your first two-day? Um, I did my first two-day um and, uh, you know, that was right around the time that I was definitely ready to leave my career in retail management. I was, you know, experiencing some burnout from, from all those hours and all those holidays and all those that time spent away from my loved ones. Uh, so that came at a really uh, great time for me. And I was very open and receptive to, uh, to what uh, the presenter was teaching at the time and, you know, had some of my own experience kind of, you know, compare against this as as well and and knew that there was a lot of truth to what was being said there. 
Yeah, and and, and just to, for the listener that's sitting there thinking, well, I don't have any experience. Nicole was already on her fourth house. I didn't either. My wife and I, we were we. We had bought our own house once upon a time that we lived in and sold it once upon a time as well. That was the extent of it. You really don't have to have experience. That's the whole point of the education and the mentors like Nicole is to make sure that you are on that path to where you are taking down these houses built in 1903. I got to confess, the oldest I've done is 1953. So you want to 50 years farther back. Um, and you can really, those things are gold mines. If you're, if you're doing it right, it can be a heavy lift, but with the education and the mentors it's not a problem is no problem at all. Who helped you with the house? Did you have a mentor you consulted with on a 1903 build or were you at the point where you're like, Hey, I got this. Uh, you know, I consulted a little bit, uh, still at that time with, uh, Chris Wyatt, one of our other North Texas single family mentors. So, uh, he actually, uh, I didn't know this at the time, but he, uh, at, at least initially when I first started buying in Sherman Denison, but he was heavily invested there. And we had, you know, he had property right around the corner from, my first one up there, and you know, I think he has one on the same street, maybe as as the 1903 house, and so he was really familiar with the area. But uh, he was the one that he and I kind of, uh, you know, had a similar uh, strategy, a similar approach to you know the types of properties that we liked to buy. So that was, uh, you know, I definitely have used the other mentors as well, uh, you know, prior to joining the team. But uh, but he and I really kind of locked up and you know saw things the same way and saw that that opportunity yeah you you you, he he went down the path he grabbed you by the hand pulled you down with him we're going to head into our last break when we come back i want to hear a little bit about what you do as a mentor i want to hear about some of your goals because you've done a lot already what's to come stick around Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Andy Webb. You're listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. If you have any questions for me, send me an email to askandy at l-u-i-n-c Dot com. And I'm joined today by Nicole, and Nicole is a, is a Lifestyles member out of Dallas-Fort Worth, just like I am, and she's been investing in rental real estate for, I think it was about 10 years now, so so very good track record. And Nicole, we've 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 heard some of the highlights, and, and yeah, I'll tell you, my, my biggest rehab was pretty heavy. It was on a 1953 house. I can only imagine what you're having to do to a house that's even older at 1903, so you've got a a, a great raft of experience there. Have all of your rehabs been that big, or have you taken on some 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 light lifts as well? Uh, oh no, we've taken on some lighter lifts. Um, you know, especially getting started. You know, the first one, I think it was you know like a thirty thousand dollar rehab. Of course, that's all covered in the hard money loan, pretty much. So I didn't have to come out of pocket. Actually, my out of pocket was less than thirty thousand on that property. Um, you know, but sometimes it's just, you know, paint and flooring, maybe, you know, patch some drywall here and there in a new appliance package and you're good to go. So yeah. certainly yeah. have a few of those as well. I, l- I love the heavy lifts. I find those are the really fun ones because you, you you take this thing that is really just bad. I mean, just junk and it shines so much. The neighbors are interested. The the, the people that you advertise to, you, you have it marketed and, and, and leased in no time. It's just a really amazing thing to see how these, these, these really rough places become diamonds and and that's what you're doing but but it doesn't have to be that heavy of a lift but in fact i think it's a natural progression for investors to take on the lighter stuff and progressively as they do more and more get more comfortable with some of the uh some of the bigger bigger rehabs so you've been doing single family for a good decade have you gotten involved with the multifamily side of things at all I have, uh, you know, kind of gotten involved with that a little bit more recently. My first uh, multifamily passive investment was about three years ago, but we've already gone full cycle and sold that property and got a got a nice surprise the week of Thanksgiving when we, you know, had the the settle uh, settlement of that sale. So nice. Uh, so that was that was very exciting for sure. Do I have to do single family before I can do multifamily? 
No, you do not. Uh, in fact, I was actually very pleasantly surprised that, you know, I thought it would take, you know, millions of dollars to invest in the multifamily. And, you know, we got into our first multifamily passive investment for $25,000. And then we made a 126% return in about 25 months on that $25,000. Wow. So. More, more than doubling your, your, your investment in a very short period of time. Yeah, I've seen, I've done 25, I've done bigger investments. I've seen where the syndicators, the lead, what we call lead investors, these are the folks that are finding and, and managing the, the investment. Um, I've seen them take people in for as low as 10,000, 10, uh, maybe lower, I don't know. But mm -hmm. basically, it, it's a very abundance mindset group and, and they want to give back and they want to they remember these these lead investors when they were just starting out and maybe they didn't have as much capital or maybe they were just nervous too nervous to put too much into one place all at once for the first time right so they they they, they will give back a session in essence by 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 bringing some people on board as well for for a much lower uh contribution in 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 a sense. So it's a, it's a great, great way that leads give back uh, at Lifestyles Unlimited. Now you are giving back as a mentor. Just what does a mentor do? How would I, what would I, how would I use your, your services as a mentor, as an investor? Well, uh, initially, you know, we sit down, we, we kind of figure up, you know, what your starting point is and what your strategy needs to be based on what your goals are and what your um, resources are so that we can, you know, formulate a realistic path to your retirement, um, set up sort of a short-term and a long-term uh, investment strategy. And then, you know, as you're going through the process of learning to evaluate properties, we're here to help kind of give you some feedback and, and coach you through that process. And then, you know, pretty much every step of the way, when you get ready to make an offer on a property, when you're through the rehab on the property, whatever phase you're in, you know, when you're getting ready to market that property, when you're getting ready to renew a lease on that property, you know, sometimes, you know, because we have, you know, human beings living in the property, there, there can be issues that come up from time to time. But our mentors, you know, such as myself, are, are there to walk you through those and how to best handle those so that you still come out with a, a positive outcome on those on those issues as well. When you're talking with uh, investors or new, new, let's not say investors, let's say they're new members to Lifestyles Unlimited, they're not yet investors. They're they're trying to find that first investment house. What's the biggest thing holding people back at the moment that you, that you're seeing? The biggest fear or whatever whatever it may be. Well, I, I mean, I would say fear in general, you know, fear of the unknown, you know, there, you start to talk yourself out of these things when you're not really, uh, you know, your first one, you know, you start to, your, your mind can be clouded with all kinds of doubts. So to have somebody to reach out to who's been there, who's done that, who's come out on the other side and has had such a great experience with it that they're willing to, to turn around and help that next person with a hand up to, you know, to kind of overcome those fears and, you know, just give you a little bit of perspective. You know, I, I talk to people that are, you know, they have a lot of, of funds in their retirement account and they're afraid to pull it out. And, you know, so I get to share my story of that second house that I bought with them, you know, and I've gone over, sat down and gone over spreadsheets with people where, you know, like these are the projected returns in my 401k. This is what I think I can do with real estate. Uh, you know, and, and over time, you know, they they see that, you know, you might have a little bit of a penalty when you take some money out of your 401k early. It's just a fact of it. But once you reinvest that, you're going to much, much more than make up for that initial hit. So it's just a matter of, you know, playing that scenario all the way through and seeing what your actual potential is with real estate. And we try to be very conservative. You know, I, I'm definitely, I don't want to you know, overpromise what somebody can can possibly achieve with real estate. So, you know, even with conservative estimates, looking at some of those examples side by side, you know, the, the real estate always comes out better in my experience. So, uh, you know, I've had the opportunity to interview a lot of people over the years on this program, and a lot of folks have done what you're talking about. They've they've gone into that 401k and even taken the 10 percent penalty if they're under 59 and a half, even paying you know, the taxes on that, they, they, they will tell you hands down that they have come out far, far better by taking that money, taking control and putting that into hard assets like single family houses or apartments and just the yields, the returns, the cash flow, the taxes, all, all the ways that we make money with those assets just propels them much, much farther uh, ahead than where they would have been had they just let that sit in the 
401k where you're essentially kind of treading treading water watching watching the market crash again uh elon musk and twitter and who knows what's going on across the ocean and, and so on um i think that's great and i love one of the activities that you as a mentor do aside from you you guys do a couple of things that i think help uh members that it, those are the case studies and then those are the mm-hmm. single family road trips and i saw you not too long ago at a single family road trip in irving tell us a little bit about what goes on at that uh, at that event, uh, from an education perspective, yeah. Well, so we either go to a property that a member has recently purchased, or that might possibly be for sale and available to one of our members to purchase. Um, you know, or it's, it's in some phase of renovation when we go there, so you can see what it looks like, uh, sort of the before scenario. Uh, we walk through the property. We have a team of vendors there at the property to walk through, you know, their piece of, of the puzzle, you know, how they contribute to making this all come together, uh, you know, and then you've got other members there that, you know, some, you know, varying levels of experience and, you know, you can, you can definitely talk to the more experienced members and connect with them and learn a lot that way. That's definitely a very valuable way to learn as well. I never want to discount that, uh, but we walk through the, general contract bid, and we walk through the numbers on that property and what those projected returns are. And, you know, just getting used to and comfortable seeing a property in that state because, you know, that's those are the types of properties that we buy. They're properties that need a little bit of love <laughs> before <laughs> yeah. somebody's going to want to live in them. Absolutely. Uh, you know, that can be, sometimes it's hard to visualize that, but once you get used to, to going to those properties and you can you know, we talk through what the the ultimate finish out is going to look like, you know, then you start to be able to visualize those a little bit better. And it starts to get a little bit less scary Absolutely. to buy that first house. To, so. to our earlier conversation, that helps get people over that fear hump. And I can speak to the listener again, as Nicole had experience coming into this as an investor joining Lifestyles, I had none. Those single family road trips are hands down one of the best ways. I uh, that took me from zero to to a hundred in, in in no time. Um, the things I learned there are really what has helped me as an investor today. Al- along with, like you said, the, the networking and and of course uh, tapping into my mentors at at every opportunity. We'd have just about thirty forty seconds left. What does the future hold for you? What are your short term, mid term? What what kind of goals do you have? Well, you know, I've had uh, several houses now for for several years, and right now it's time to sell those and redeploy that equity. So we're looking at, you know, getting involved in in some sort of a multifamily scenario uh, by the end of 2022. So uh, possibly an IRO and, uh, you know, possibly a few passive investments. And beyond that, you know, there's lots of possibilities out there. So that's, that's the direction that we're headed, though. Yeah, you've already seen the success as a passive investor in that one deal. Iro for the listener, that's somebody that's an independent rental owner buying their own apartment com- complex by themselves and continuing to passively invest. That's great. Hey, Nicole, thank you so much for coming on today, sharing your story, acquainting the audience with you, one of our single family mentors here in DFW. Again, go to GiveMeTotalFreedom.com. The promo code is save big. I thank you for listening. And remember, it's not the money. It's the lifestyle. You have a good day. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.